everyone to make and do right, right to your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Stephen. I'm Fern. And let's have a look at what's coming up on today's show. Just one piece of paper. Find out what it will become in today's One Minute Make. Find out how to make a great game of drafts that's fun to play, good to make and you can eat it too. And watch out for Hungry Martians in a great fun fingertips game. And for all the details on today's makes, you can video the show and play it back later, look on our website or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. How? How? OK, Chief Sitting Pretty, how do you keep yourself organised? Keep everything in. Great fingertips, T-O-T. Great fingertips, T-O-T? Great fingertips, totally organised totem. Wow. Now, the great thing about the fingertips, T-O-T, is not only does it store all your bits and bobs, but when you're using it, you can unstack it, and then you can stack it back in any order you like. It's totally useful and totally organised. How about making Buffalo Bill here? And what about this little fella? Look, he's got a cool place where you can store your pencil sharpener in his nose. <laughs> now, if you want to make this, uh, you need to get totally organised and collect loads of crisp pots. Also, you need some cardboard and you need a sweet tube as well. First thing you want to do is draw around the base of your crisp pot and then cut this shape out so you have a circle of card and you need one of these for every pot that you're going to use. Next thing you want to do is connect the bit of cardboard to the top of your crisp pot and the easiest way to do it is get a bit of modelling clay and sharp pencil and make a hole in the both of them and the reason obviously for the modelling clay is to keep your fingertips safe then attach them together with a paper fastener just open that out nice and securely in place and then you can glue the piece of cardboard to the base of your crisp pot ready for stacking. Now you'll find that the lids on your crisp pots are quite tight so it's a good idea if you trim off any rim on your crisp pot so they're easier to stack and unstack. And now it's time to make silly faces. Don't even go there. Cut circles of card for the eyes and we've attached them on with newspaper and glue. For the nose you just cut the end off the sweet tube and for the hands we've just added a little extra strutch just here that if you bend over you can stick in place just like that. And if you leave a gap at the top of your tube, so the next one can stack on top. Now, we've come up with loads of different designs, but if you'd like to make Buffalo Bill here, you need to get an egg box. These bits become Buffalo Bill's pointy horns and the egg cup inside become his nose. All you need to do is just stick it on using some newspaper and PVA glue. Give your pots a base of woody brown paint and then it's up to your imagination how they look. You can make a scissor holder with wonky eyes. An eagle looks really authentic. Or build yourself a bear. And of course, if you've got giant pots... Like these. And lots of paint, then you could make a giant, totally organised totem. Once you've got the know-how. Doing? <laughs> you can't go eat to people's counters, Fern. Mm, I can make fingertips chocolate checkers, Stephen. We can't even have a rematch now. You've eaten half the checkers. Oh, you have to make some more then, won't you? Now, Draft is a great game and made even more fun with the fingertips chocolate checkers. They're absolutely delicious. And look, it's because they're peppermint creams. One half of them are covered in chocolate with a white chocolate button on top and the others are left plain with a brown chocolate button on top. The games board is just made from a pizza box with paper weaving to get the checkered effect. And the really cool thing is you can actually store your checkers inside the box. If there's any left, of course. Now, it's a great make and it is well worth giving it a go. And believe it or not, there is no cooking involved whatsoever. You need to get your fingertips on 200 grams of icing sugar, powdered egg white and peppermint essence. Now, the first thing to do is mix water with your powdered egg white equal to one egg, and we pop that in just there. And to this, you add a couple of drops of peppermint essence. So let's put a couple of drops in there. That should do it. And to this, you add your icing sugar that's been ready sieved, but you add it a bit at a time. 
Then give it a mix until it goes into a nice stiff paste. Just like that. Then you want to sprinkle some more icing sugar onto your work surface and tip out your paste. And the reason for the icing sugar, there it is, is to stop it sticking to your work surface. And then roll it out until it's about half a centimetre thick. Then you can cut out your counters using a cutter. So let's do one here. And then pop them onto a bit of greaseproof paper. And when you've got enough, you want to put them in a cool place to dry overnight, but don't put them in your fridge. And you want to cover them with a clean tea towel. Now, while Stephen's making the peppermint creams, I'm going to show you how to make the checkerboard. First up, get hold of a medium-sized, clean pizza box. Now, most pizza places will give you these for free, so that's very handy. Now, if you like painting, you could paint on your checks, but here's how to do it the fingertips way. You use woven paper. You need some strips of different coloured paper in two colours, which are 30 centimetres long by 3 centimetres wide. Now, get your first colour and stick them all along one side of your box. They can flap up like this. Then get one strip of the other colour and just start weaving. So you go over, under, over, under, over, under, and then just pull your strip right through to the end of your box. Now when you get your next strip, you want to do the opposite. So you start by going under, over, under, over, under, and keep going until you've covered your whole box. And there you have it. It looks wicked, doesn't it? And now you just need to stick all the sides down and cut off any excess card. And you could add a nice border to neaten it up too. How's it going, Steve? It's going OK. I just have the messy bit still to go. Now, we've melted a bar of chocolate. And the way we do it here on Fingertips, of course, is you fill a bowl, uh, a third of the way up, a big bowl with recently boiled water. Into that, you place a smaller bowl with your bar of chocolate in and you leave it to melt. And then you give it a stir every so often to help it on its way. And that's nicely melted. So the water should have also cooled down by now. So we can take out the bowl. And then we get dipping. So, Take one of your peppermint creams and give it a dunk. And let's have a look, see what this looks like. How about that? Very nice. Pop it down. And on top, we want to put a white chocolate button. And on the other ones, you just want to dab a bit of water onto a milk chocolate button and pop it on top. Right, Fern, I'm ready for the rematch. OK, Stevie, see if you can keep from eating them long enough to play. Fingertips Chocolate Checkers. Mmm, delicious. Got a minute? Yes, it's the part of the programme where we show you how to make something in under a minute using bits and pieces you can find around your home. Today, it's my turn to make. And it's my turn to type. And this is all it takes for me to surprise you in under one minute. Oh, yes. That's not a lot of stuff. I know. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Clear that stuff out of the way and bit of paper, fold in half. Then you just want a little dab of glue in the middle. Ooh, and, nice. yep, you need to fold this over, which is quite important. Just stick that one corner. This loopy bit's very important. Ten Turn it over. Ten seconds have gone. Dab of glue, just him. Quite confident about this one. Stick a dab of glue there. Paper then, well, you're close. 20 seconds have gone! Bit of tape, stick that on there and turn it over. Now I need to double it over. Ooh, it's going oh, pear-shaped! I'm having problems. <laughs> there we go. 30 now, seconds. The go. tricky bit, I need to hole punch my sticky tape. Be careful. And it goes, and I've done it, yes. <laughs> now, piece of cotton. 35 Thread seconds. That through. Is it fern cotton? That's just rubbish talk, Stephen. Right. 40 right. seconds have gone. Stop the clock! She'll be back in a minute. This is a kite, and it flies really well if you get up a decent pace. But of course, if it's windy, you haven't got to run around with it. Now, you don't just have to do a blank version. You could come up with your own design or check this one out. If you have access to the internet, why don't you check out the Fingertips website? As always, address at the end of today's programme. <laughs> Click on One Minute Make. And you'll also find this design here, the fingertips version. So take flight and make your very own kite. It only takes a minute, so give it a go. And try and beat the clock. <laughs> this is Fun Fingertips, the part of the programme where we... Fun? Wasn't me. 
This is Fun Fingertips, the part of the programme where... Fun? It wasn't my tummy rumbling, it came from over there. Did you forget to feed them again, Stephen? Are you ready with the food fire? Ready. Then fire. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> oh. That should keep them happy for a while, which will give us just enough time to show you how to make the actual Martians. Now, the bodies are made from a third of kitchen roll tube, so from one kitchen roll tube, you'll get three Martians. Now, to make the mouth, you need to cut two egg cups from an egg box, and you want to stick one in the top of the tube, just there, and the other one just leaning against this one. And all already you can see that the Martian is taking shape. It's good, isn't it? And for the eyes, all you need is two polystyrene balls, and you stick these in place, one here, and also one just there. And then you can cover it however you like. Now, you could paint your Martian, or you could cover it in a layer of paper mache. Doesn't make the game any different, but just gives some different effects. Look, this one is a crinkly version that's been paper mache and this one is nice and smooth. That one's been painted. And there's also another type of Martian you can make. Again, you need a third of your kitchen roll tube. There you go. Thank you, Stephen. And you need to cut this section out of your egg box. Then just cut off this pointy section just here and stick it onto your kitchen roll tube. So you want a bit of tape just about here and the same on the other side. And you'll probably need a few pieces around the back of it as well. And now you've got the choice once again to either leave it smooth and paint it straight away, but it's probably a better idea if you paper mache it because of all the sticky tape. And now to make the Hungry Martian food fire up. And it works so well, doesn't it? And it's so easy to make. All you need is a margarine tub, also an elastic band, uh, three wooden lolly sticks and an off-cut from an egg box. And all you do is you get two lolly sticks and you stick them into like a V shape just there. And where your lolly sticks join, you just stick your off-cut from your egg box and that will act as a shelf to hold the Martian's food. Now, take your margarine tub and make a snip just along here. And then you want to just cut a little slit along like that. Then take your lolly stick and just put it through the slit so half of it's inside and half of it's outside of your margarine tub. Then get a bit of sticky tape and just secure it in place inside your margarine tub like that. And don't worry about the slit just here because you're going to cover that over in just a tick. Now you want your firing arm. Stephen, you got that? I do. There you go. Lovely. Now you want to get a little bit of tape and put a piece on each end of your lolly sticks. One bit there and one bit there. Then you just want to put the rest of the sticky tape underneath your margarine tub, like that. So now you've created this nice little hinge just here. Then get your elastic band and just stretch it between the two like that. Now it's ready to be loaded. Now you could leave your food fire like that, it'll still work, or you could paint it. We've given this one a space age design. Now you just need to fill it with food. And I tell you what, it's a good job that our hungry Martians like screwed up bits of paper because it means you'll never run out of tempting, tasty morsels. And now you're ready to play. Hey, you could go to town, you know, and make your hungry Martians a whole Martian landscape. Now, this has been made from a fruit box that we got from the local supermarket. We've cut off one side and we've made these craters here from pulp paper. We've covered the whole base in PVA glue and sprinkled on sand to get a cool effect. And for these boulders, these ones here, what you do is get yourself some kitchen roll, scrunch it into a ball and dunk it into some PVA glue and then just roll it into some sand like this. And look or the sand will just stick onto it. Look at that, it's good, isn't it? And just stick it in place. Now, to catch any misfires, you could just get a piece of card and stick it to the back of your box. And when you've stuck it in place, you're ready to paint it. It looks great, doesn't it? Look, we've painted the base a nice Mars red and the boulders to match. And we painted the backdrop to look like the depths of space with stars, planets and shooting comets. Now we have to do is add our hungry Martians. And if you want to give it a go, then just check out the Fingertips website address, as always, at the end of today's show. Just click on Fun and all of the information you need will be there. But of course, if you've recorded today's show, you can play it back whenever you want. And if you have a pen and paper handy now, we'll give you a few more tips. Cut a kitchen roll into thirds and stick on two egg box pieces for the head. Add two polystyrene balls for the eyes. Then either paper mache and paint it 
or you can just paint it. To make the other type of Martian, cut out another section of egg box and stick it to another third of kitchen roll. Once again, paper mache and paint or not. Make the food firing arm with a V shape of two lolly sticks and a piece of egg box for a shelf. Stick a third lolly stick into one end of a margarine tub, then add the firing arm and an elastic band. You could decorate your food firer and make a Martian landscape from kitchen paper, glue and sand. Now we've got two sets of Martian food. We have blue for Fern and yellow for me. We have ten shots each. Let's see who can get the most food into the Martians' mouths. Oh, I'll tell you what, Stephen, I think we'd better hurry up. These Martians sound hungry. Oy! And next time on Fingertips, we show you how to recycle an old washing powder box into a fantastic moving card. And make sure your eggs are well dressed with Little Fingertips costume egg cups. And we go back to the days of the wild, wild west with the Fingertips Western Party and the game of sharpshooting Tin Can Alley. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to make anything from the programme, then why don't you check out the Fingertips website? The address is just there. And we'll see you soon for some more Fingertips. fingertips. See ya. Bye. Bye.